Hey, a man's gotta eat. A long bus ride can be quite boring, and sometimes a nice nap can help and pass the time. But for Tim McLean, falling asleep on his bus ride would prove to be a fatal decision. Tim was on his way home from working at a fair in Alberta. The ride home would take 15 hours. So Tim put on some headphones and tried to relax. Most of the trip went just as planned, nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever, until the bus came to a halt only three hours from Tim's destination. Vince Lee, a middle-aged man, stepped onto the bus and took a seat near the front. Just another passenger looking to get somewhere. Or was he? At some point during the ride, Vince looked back and took notice of Tim, who was surprisingly unaware. So he stood up, walked to the back of the bus where Tim was seated and sat next to him. Tim barely offered Vince so much as a glance and closed his eyes to get more sleep. Out of nowhere, Vince withdrew a blade and began violently stabbing Tim in the neck and chest, soon after decapitating him. The bus slammed on its brakes and passengers screaming spewed out into the street, crying and vomiting hysterically. A couple of passengers and a bus driver, using hammers and a crowbar as weapons, were able to keep Vince on the bus after he tried escaping a number of times. It took hours to get Vince into custody, but when he eventually tried to escape through a window, he was apprehended. What he had done while he remained on that bus for hours was, to say the least, horrifying. Police found body parts stuffed in Vince's pockets and other chunks of Tim's body flung around the area where they had been sitting. Tim's eyes and pieces of his heart weren't recovered, however, due to the fact that Vince devoured them. He then proceeded to carry the head around with him while he remained on the bus as if it were a trophy. Vince claimed that voices had told him to kill Tim because Tim was an alien. He was sentenced to a mental health facility and just earlier this year has been granted unsupervised outings into the public. A dinner party hosted by a cannibal reminds me of Hannibal Lecter. However, this case is far from fiction. This is the story of a man named Nikolai, but perhaps he was better known as the Metal Fang. This was because Nikolai had lost his teeth and had them replaced with white metal ones, like a villain straight from a comic book. Nikolai had a craving for hunting, most specifically hunting women. He would find women in secluded areas and viciously attack them with an axe he usually kept hidden on his person as he went about his daily routine. From there, he would cut off choice parts of their dead bodies and pack them up to bring home. This continued for quite some time as more and more women were butchered. And while he brought all of the meat home to cook up for himself, he found that he just had too much. And what do you do when you have a surplus of something? Well you share it with friends. He would invite friends over for delicious ethnic cuisine, expertly prepared just for them. Many meats that were quite unique, never having been tasted before, it offered a pleasurable experience for the palates of his dinner guests. But of course, they all went unaware of what they were truly devouring. Little did they know that Nikolai's freezer was filled with human meat. This went on and on until eventually Nikolai made the mistake of inviting over a couple drunk men. The two men stumbled into Nikolai's kitchen and sobered up rather quickly when they discovered a woman's severed head and her intestines set aside and ready to be cooked. The authorities were contacted immediately and the metal fang was arrested. Nikolai was sentenced to a mental health institution and while being transported from one facility to another managed to escape. But thankfully he was found and apprehended once again in 1991. But all those things aside, Nikolai ended up being released and now lives freely amongst the public. Jealousy. It can make a person do some pretty crazy things. However, in this case, that craziness 
gets brought to an entirely new level. Luca Magnotta was a Canadian gay pornographic actor who worked as a model, stripper, and a male escort. A seriously sick individual, he was charged on numerous instances of fraud where he applied for credit cards under other identities to make thousands of dollars worth of purchases. This aside, he also took pleasure in uploading videos of himself on YouTube where he murdered kittens. One video he named One Boy, Two Kittens showed him suffocating kittens to death with a vacuum cleaner. Disturbing behavior often evolves and for Luca, there was no exception to that rule whatsoever. Luca began dating an international student from China named Lin Jun. This was until the two broke up in 2012, and Lin decided to see another man. This enraged Luca, who would come to commit an atrocity so horrifying it shook Canada and China alike. He kidnapped Lin and tied him to a bed, letting him linger for a while before he violently stabbed him to death with an ice pick. He went on to cut off Lin's head, then his legs and arms. He had sex with the headless, limbless torso before cutting off pieces of flesh with a knife and fork and eating him, sharing the meat with a small puppy. The entire thing was filmed and uploaded online, titled as One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. But Luca's sick, twisted path didn't end there. Luca sent out packages to a number of different political facilities around the country. Blood soaked and reeking of death, the packages once opened revealed Lynn's body parts. Luca had shipped them out, set on victimizing as many people as he could. The video Luca had made was reported a number of times and authorities just originally shrugged it off. But after inspecting the body parts, they eventually found that Lynn was indeed murdered. And they were able to label Luca as the prime suspect. However, by that time, Luca had fled the country. He was eventually the product of his own undoing, caught in a Berlin internet cafe admiring himself in articles on the internet. He was noticed and promptly apprehended. Luca decided to be tried by judge and jury, and his court date is set for September 8th, of this year. The old saying goes that a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but some men are only interested in having your heart in their stomach. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'll see you next Wednesday, so don't forget to subscribe because you won't want to miss it.